It's been um, an interesting presentation. Uh, when she started, I said, wow, I came here to learn because there's a lot that we didn't know. But when I got the invitation, uh, as academics, you usually do, I drew up my marking scheme um, <laughs> for this. But I realized that she had taken my marking scheme <laughs> and then presented it already. So Barbara, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm quite um, excited about the level of analysis that has been done, and I felt that as academics, we should be doing more of this in highlighting some of these policy gaps in, in supporting um, government. I want to believe that the whole concept or discussion about local content is about promoting inclusive growth because Africa largely, and Ghana for that matter, we have seen growth, but its redistributive effect has been very poor. And therefore, we, our, our economy is almost like um, a, a, a setting where growth is, is recorded, but growth is not resident here because of largely the, 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 f the extent of foreign ownership and participation in all of these things. So I want to believe that the, 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 the intention behind it is more or less trying to ensure broad-based growth growth that uh, benefit low and moderate income earners, growth that ensures that uh, its distributive effect is also quite strong, and therefore growth will be recorded and will also be resident here. Otherwise, um, Ghana is almost like a, a place where we pound fufu for others to go and eat. And, and I want to believe that local content is to ensure that we also eat some of the fufu, and then uh, uh, so we can also be, 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 be OK. So within that context, I think that um, local content, and, and, and Ghana is not an isolation. Um, from the presentation, we have seen that uh, other countries are equally doing that, whether they are in the emerging or whatever. Even developed countries are talking about local content today, which is almost a threat to the so-called globalization with inward looking and all of that. So uh, we are probably not uh, strangers in all of this. Um, I gather from the presentation that we have made some progress that we can celebrate. But they are, they are also sounding the alarm that there is more that has to be done. And therefore, mm -hmm. I think uh, there's a starting point which I think we have to um, recognize. My understanding so far is that local content is more than just a content. But it should rather be pursued as a, a strategy and integrated into the overall economic uh, management strategy and a response to attracting foreign direct investment. Uh, I don't think that the framers of the law, and of course we have talked about the different aspect of it that needed to be harmonized, so I will not go there. I want to believe that the intention behind it is more of an enabler rather than as a constraint to doing business in Ghana. And I think foreign investors shouldn't see it as a constraint to doing business, but rather as an enabler, because it's also about compliance. It's part of the regulatory environment. And therefore, anybody who would want to come and do business here would certainly would want to understand the regulatory environment and therefore how they will respond, even in terms of offsetting the regulatory burden and all of that. That's important. Then I will go back to what uh, the ambassador talked about. I think, uh, Ambassador, is it Denmark? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I agree with her. I think that Sometimes the communication of the local content is important in terms of our drive in track, attracting foreign in investment. So it is not seen as a trap. Okay, so here we are talking about the clarity and the predictability of that policy is also very, very important um, going forward. And I think that some of this local content, even in terms of foreign uh, firms, also get certain benefit that often should not be lost on us in terms of certain tax concessions that are available to them because they would want to employ locals and also use local uh, in terms of perhaps which broadly we'll call tax expenditures because the country loses a lot in terms of the concessions that we give to them or in the name of uh, local content as well as part of the trade-off. So the issue is how do we manage the trade-off between the, the need to enforce local content and then, and then our drive to attract a foreign direct investment. I mean, a, a country that went through HIPIC 
relief initiative, completed that in 2004, and then also finished the multilateral debt relief initiative in 2006, we have borrowed quite rapidly, and we have very limited borrowing space. Yes, we have a huge infrastructure deficit. Growth is constrained. But of course, we can inject growth through external debt financing and FDI. Given the low savings in the economy, there is the need to attract foreign investment. My understanding is that capital will only go to where it is loved. And therefore, we should not package a local content as a way of actually hijacking the decision makers of those who provide funds. Because, and, and when we have talked about local content all this while, we are focused on the labor participation and the other things. But when it comes to the financial resources, it's very, very low. And people have brought their money, they need a return consistent with the level of risk that they assume with. So we need to look at the landscape quite comprehensively. So that, then whilst we have also talked about um, employment, sometimes it's the wage that they command. Are we looking at the numbers? in terms of the human beings on the payroll or what they command. Okay, and then we're also talking about even the sustainability. Honorable Deputy Minister talked about it. In fact, the, some studies that I have seen actually suggest that more than 70% of all those who are even employed in those value chain and sectors are in vulnerable employment. With the slightest shock, all those people are just exiting and we are all concerned. And then because they are earning so much, the, the effect of that even in the revenue envelope it remains very dwarfed because they are not earning that much. One expatriate salary can actually swallow all of us up here. <laughs> okay. Then also I agree with Pauline, I agree with uh, Honorable Minister of Works and everybody here. You see, at the time that we conceived the law and we're thinking about it, we forgot about the local content actually in practice in terms of the readiness of the local to actually take advantage of the legal framework that we are actually developing. Look, you can talk about the mining sector. We started drilling the oil and all of that before Ghana started sending people to go and do oil and gas accounting. By the time they finish the account, there will be no gas for them to even come and manage in the first place. Okay, so there is, there is that mismatch that I think that we needed to actually address um, going, going forward. So I talked, so the, the issue is the willingness of the local uh, environment to also take advantage of the content is also very, very important. And then align that with skill training from the investors. Where, where should we train? Where should we focus our resources? And then, so assuming we were able to harmonize the legislative framework, then Ghana will be able to, to decide where are the gaps in the value chain that we can actually rescale, retool in order to take advantage of that. And then we monitor with key performance indicators going forward. Otherwise, uh, it's going to be very um, difficult for us. So maybe perhaps um, I'll take the rest of my slides home. And then, um, <laughs> and, uh, thank you very much.